A few months ago, I was listening to a Joe Rogan podcast where he was having a conversation with Naval. I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name. All right, let's give it a try. Ravikant or Ravikant, one of those two. Naval is well known for being a very smart and successful entrepreneur and investor. During their talk, Naval referenced some tweets he wrote on how to become rich without getting lucky. Since he's highly regarded and not known for BSing people, I knew there had to be some real value in these tweets. So I took a closer look and thought that they were really really good. In this video, I'm going to pull out a handful of these topics to help you think through how to implement them into your life to help you become rich. I'll also throw some of my thoughts in throughout the video. Just a heads up, there's 37 of them and I'm not going to cover all those suckers. So if you want to see the rest of them, then I'll throw a link in the description. Hey, I'm Jared with an A and on this channel, we like to talk about all things personal finance and investing. As I go through these, let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite or just kind of let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear from you. The first way to get rich is by seeking wealth and not money. Everyone thinks that they want money, but money will come and go. When you see people who have those nice cars, big houses, designer clothes, or other things like that, you might immediately think that they're rich. But just because they had these things doesn't mean anything. They might have a lot of money, but not actually have wealth. Naval suggests wealth are assets that earn you money while you sleep. If all you have is money, and you continue to spend it on dumb things, then you'll never be rich. He says that wealth are things like the factory, the robots, the computer program that's running at night, or even the money in the bank that's being reinvested into other assets and other businesses. More examples would be a piece of real estate property. You can consider a social media account an asset if you have a following, and a YouTube channel is also an asset if it earns you money while you sleep. To become wealthy, you need to start thinking about how you can accumulate more assets that earn you money and less assets that lose you money. If you haven't done it already, please Hulk smash that thumbs up button. The reason that you want wealth is because it buys your freedom. Now this is something that the FIRE community has figured out already and that is why I am a huge fan of financial independence. The vast majority of people either hate what they do for work or wish they were doing something else. The problem is that we get caught up in the societal norms that tell us to buy more and more useless objects that make us happy in the moment, but not long term. Allowing ourselves to fall into this mindset only leaves us more and more in the hole to where we have to stay in that crappy job to pay for those vanity items that you think that you want. It's this vicious cycle that's really hard to climb out of once you're already in it. Naval mentions how buying the high-end clothing, expensive cars, and massive houses gets really boring and really stupid really, really fast. You can have all kinds of money, but not actually be free. Tying your self-worth to things you buy, even though you have the money, does not make you free. Having to wake up to go to a job that you hate, where you make a ton of money, isn't real freedom. Those things make you a slave to that money. People living far below their means enjoy a freedom that people busy upgrading their lifestyles just can't fathom. I love that Naval, a multimillionaire, is bringing this up as such an important topic because it's probably one of the most important topics. Now this does not mean that you shouldn't upgrade your life as you make more money and build more wealth, but the upgrade should not increase at the exact same rate as your bank account. It should be at a rate that's a lot less than that. This is super easy to do and something that a lot of people overlook. You get a big bonus at work and it's time to go buy some new clothes because heck, you deserve it. You get a nice little bump in salary, well, we can afford a nicer car now, so let's go get a little upgrade because we're making more money now. The next thing you know, that level of spending becomes your new normal. The things you do, the way you act, your happiness and comfort level have now shifted up. You're immediately less free since you've continued you to increase your spending up to that monetary ceiling that is your income. But you need to ask yourself, what was wrong with the normal that you were living before you got that pay raise or bonus? Was life really that awful? Most likely not because you had adjusted your life and level of happiness to that amount of money coming in every single month. Once you get to that new level, it's very difficult to adjust back down to living below your means. I created a solution to this that helps make sure my spending does not increase at the same rate 
rate as my income. This has played a big role in guaranteeing myself a 70% savings rate. This is what I do. Every time I get some sort of pay increase or bonus, I immediately take a portion of that and automatically increase the amount that I'm investing. So if I receive an extra, we'll say $1,000 per month, then I would either increase my investments by $1,000 per month or do something like increase my investments by $800 per month and increase my lifestyle by $200 per month. For me, I am very content with my life, so I usually increase my investments by 100%. Making money is not about luck. It's about becoming the kind of person who makes money. Before really thinking about it, I was the kind of person who was convinced that there's just a little bit of luck baked into every single success story out there. To an extent, I still believe this, but Naval gave me a little bit of a different perspective that has made me think about luck within the whole success equation just a little bit differently. There's four kinds of luck. The first is blind luck. There is no effort and it happens in ways that are completely out of our control. Because of this, you can't bank on this type of luck making you wealthy. The next three are the ones that you want to think more about. The second type of luck is from hustling. It comes out of hard work and continuously working at something. Thomas Edison created the light bulb through this kind of luck. He's known for that quote that says something like, I have not failed, I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Even though he kept trying and failing over and over, he continued putting in the time and hard work until he found success. The third kind of luck is luck from preparation. This kind of luck happens when you are very skilled in a particular area, and because you are so skilled at it, you notice things that other people don't, and you capitalize on it. You create a very unique solution to a problem and benefit because of it. The last kind of luck is luck from your unique character. I like to call it a superpower. It's where you build a unique character, a unique brand, a unique mindset, where luck will find you. This luck comes to you because of who you are, how you behave, and what you know. Because you have this superpower, people bring opportunities to you where they've already done all of the heavy lifting and possibly have had some luck of their own. All you have to do is execute on your unique characteristic and profit. Boom, you've put yourself in a position to capitalize on luck. One big takeaway that I got from Naval is that wealth stacks up one chip at a time, not all at once. We all like to think that if we get this huge windfall of money, then we'll be wealthy and everything will end up great. That might be true and it might not, but getting a large sum of cash all at once isn't very common and in our case is not very likely. So just get that expectation out of your mind. Therefore, it's important to always remember that we're playing the long game. We're chipping away at that rock little by little. It's gonna take some time. So instead of expecting one big payout, you should be focusing on getting those small wins and letting them accumulate over time. Think of someone who's starting to build a rental real estate empire where they own 30 houses that generate a consistent payout on a monthly basis. It all starts with one house and adding additional houses one at a time. The next thing you need to realize is that you won't get rich renting out your time. Every single one of us have done this or are currently doing this right now. We go to work and we either get paid by the hour or get paid some sort of salary or even a commission. Just to be clear, this isn't a discount renting out your time at first or at any point in time during the process. Everyone has to do this in their life and most people who end up rich had to do this on their way to actually becoming rich and wealthy. Naval mentions how you can't create wealth by making money through work. Now, I don't completely agree with this because the financial independence retire early community has proven this thought completely wrong, but it's still a good mindset to have. If you do what the average person does and invest a very average amount of your income and you work until you hit retirement age, then you can absolutely become wealthy. But I think what he wants you to focus more on is creating the wealth before you hit that older age. In my opinion, you should always despise average. The average person is overweight, unhealthy. The average person doesn't have enough money to retire. The average the average person works at jobs that they hate until the day that they, they die. The average person puts their wants ahead of their needs. The average person has a low savings rate. The average person, they just suck. Average needs to be your new enemy, so you need to do everything in your power to not be like the average person. If your inputs are closely tied to your outputs, then you're renting out your time. He says that almost any salaried job, even the ones that pay a lot per hour like a lawyer or a doctor, you're still putting in the hours and every hour you get paid. That means that when you're sleeping, you're not earning. When you're retired, you're not earning. And when you're on vacation, 
you're not earning. Risk equals reward. Always remember that. In any business or money-making pursuit, if you're not the one taking the risks, then you're working for the person that's taking all of the risks. And the biggest reward goes to the person putting it all on the line, and rightfully so. You need to arm yourself with specific knowledge. Because of our current education system, we've all had this thought beaten into our head over the years that everything can be taught, but that is just not true. Not everything can be taught, but everything can be learned. To truly learn something that has to come through experience and on the job training. On the job training type of learning is the most important because while you're going through the whole process, you're sort of pattern matching into highly complex environments, basically building judgment in a specific domain. I could teach you things all day through this screen and while you'd learn quite a bit and it would prepare you, you don't gain that specific knowledge until you actually do the work. If you can be trained for something, then somebody else can be trained for it as well which means that the work can be mass produced, which means that you become replaceable. A good way to gain specific knowledge is by pursuing things you are already curious about, reading about it, talking to people already doing it, and getting your hands dirty trying it out. Because when you're in the middle of it, your learning will go beyond those words on the page or the sound of someone's voice explaining it to you. Think along the lines of more creative outlets. These things are a little harder to mass produce, which in turn will always leave you with work. If if you truly want to become wealthy, then you have to work as hard as you can. No one becomes wealthy by being lazy and doing things that the average person does every day. So that means no more lounging around after work and watching some show on Netflix. That means no more taking long cat naps on the weekend. Those things are gone. See ya! And of course, getting enough sleep so that you have the energy to put in the work the next day. You have to put in the time and effort to get the results. Now this doesn't mean that you work more hours and expect better results. The hours you put in are not not correlated with better results. There's even diminishing returns when you work too many hours. Your brain can only handle so much at once. Sure, you might be putting in 50 hours of work, but you were more productive in those first 25 hours, so you probably should have just stopped after that. Naval says that it's more like a lion hunting than a person running a marathon. You sprint, then you rest. You reassess, and then you try again. What you end up doing is building a marathon of sprints. More importantly, you need to pick the right thing to work on to become wealthy. Then, put all of your energy into that. We're all scattered brained and that's gonna leave you standing still and not moving forward. Pick a focus and drive towards that thing. You can always take a break and reassess to decide if it makes sense to continue or abandon this idea and move on to the next one. I've mentioned before how I am naturally scattered brained when it comes to business ideas that I have. Instead of losing focus on what I'm doing right now, I write that idea on a post-it note and put it into a box. That way, if I ever abandoned what I'm currently working on right now, then I have a bunch of other ideas to pursue that are sitting in that box. Leave a comment down below letting me know which one of these you liked the best. Check out the description for different playlists and resources to help you out with all of your personal finance needs. Please make sure to Hulk smash that thumbs up button. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Adios.